Okay, in a previous video, we introduced the notion of a double integral, and we came up with the following notion. So we've got this double integral over a rectangle in the plane of a function of two variables, dA, can be calculated two different ways with iterated integrals. So in this case, we have the y integral from c to d on the inside, the x integral from a to b on the outside, or this way is uh, the exact same in reverse. So in this video, we're gonna do about four examples of calculating this type of double integral. Okay, so the first one is uh, this one. So we'll do the double integral over the rectangle 0, 2 cross uh, 1, 2. So notice, that looks something like this. So we have 0, 2 along the x-axis, 1, 2 along the y-axis. So that's going to give us uh, something like that. Although that won't really matter so much in the calculation that we have that visualization. Okay, great. So we can turn this into an iterated integral. And the iterated integral will be in the following way. So let's maybe put um, the y component on the inside. So that means we'll go 0 to 2, 1 to 2 of x minus 3y squared. And then we'll do dy first and then dx second. Okay, so just like a partial derivative, the first thing that we want to do is find the antiderivative with respect to y. In other words, we'll consider x to be a constant and take the antiderivative with respect to y. So that'll give us the integral from 0 to 2 of, so xy minus y cubed. So y is it xy minus y cubed? So x is a constant, so the antiderivative will be that constant times our variable y, and then the antiderivative of 3y squared is obviously y cubed. Now we're gonna evaluate that from one to two, and then remember all of that is still within an x integral. All right, so let's plug some numbers in. So notice that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of, so if we plug 2 in here, we'll get 2x, um, and if we plug 2 in here, minus 8, minus, now if we plug 1 in here, we will get x, if we plug 1 in here, we'll get 1. So now we have that. So let's simplify that a little bit. That'll be the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x minus x. We'll have x, negative 8 plus 1. So that's going to be minus 7 dx. But now this is pretty simple. We can take the antiderivative with respect to x. That's going to give us half x squared minus 7x. We have to evaluate that between 0 and 7. So obviously plugging in 0, we get 0. Plugging in, uh, sorry, plugging in 2, we're going to get, so 4 over 2 is 2 minus uh, 14, so we will get minus 12 is the answer. Um, okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and we'll do another example. Okay, so for our next example, we'll take the double integral over the rectangle 1 to 2 in the x component and then 0 to pi in the y component. And then we have y sine xy. So now we need to decide, do we want to take a y integral first or an x integral first? Now notice if we take a y integral first, we'll have to use integration by parts because here we have a polynomial function y times a trans transcendental function sine. But if we take the x integral first, y is a constant, and so we, we really just have to take the antiderivative of sine. Notice we'll probably have to use some sort of substitution there, but that'll be okay. So um, all of that being said, let's go ahead and set this up so we take the x integral first. So that means the outside integral is the y integral, which is 0 to pi. The inside integral is the x integral, which is 1 to 2. Then we have y sine of xy dx dy. Okay, now we can do a little baby u substitution on this inside integral. Maybe we would let u equal xy. Notice that's going to make uh, du equal to y dx. So now notice this gives us u to substitute in there. And now this will give us du. Okay, great. And then also notice if x equals 1, that means u equals y. And then if x equals 2, that makes u equal to 2y. Okay, great.
So now notice that's going to change our integral to the integral from 0 to pi, the integral from uh, y to 2y of um, sine of u du dy. Great. But we can take the antiderivative of sine pretty easily. That is negative cosine. So we have the integral from 0 to pi of minus cosine of u. We have to evaluate that from y to 2y. And then we have to take the integral of that with respect to y. So now I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to take this minus sign, turn it into a plus, and then switch the bounds of integration like that. Great. So notice that is going to give me the integral from 0 to pi of, let's see what we have here. We're going to have cosine of y minus cosine of 2y. So cos y minus cos 2y dy. Okay. So those are two pretty easy antiderivatives. So that's going to give us uh, sine y uh, minus, let's see, that's going to be one half sine y. We have to evaluate that from zero to pi. But notice plugging, oh, sorry, this should be sine of 2y. Okay, great. Again, we use the chain rule there. So plugging in pi, we'll get zero. Plugging in zero, we'll also get zero. So the answer to this whole thing is zero. All right, I'll clean up the board. We'll do another one. Okay, so for our next example, we'll look at the integral over the rectangle 1, 2, cross 0, 1 of x over x squared plus y squared. So I think you can do this by integrating with respect to x first or y first. We're going to integrate with respect to x first because that looks um, from the outside like it might be a little bit simpler because we can do a u substitution in the first step. Okay, great. So if we integrate with respect to x first, that means our y integral will be outside. 0 to 1. Our x integral 1 to 2 will be inside and then we'll have x over x squared plus y squared dx dy. And now notice we'll probably want to do a u substitution for this. So let's go ahead and take uh, u to be equal to x squared plus y squared. That's going to make du equal to 2x dx, which makes 1 half du equal to x dx. So notice this bit is 1 half du, and then everything down here is just u. And so now let's see what happens with our bounds of integration. If x equals 1, that's going to give us u equal to 1 plus y squared. And then if x equals 2, that's going to be u equals 4 plus y squared from this right here. Okay, fantastic. So let's see what that gives us for our integral. Now we have the integral from 0 to 1. Um, I can put a half out front. That's from this half right here. And then I have the integral from uh, y squared plus 1 to y squared plus 4. And now on the inside, I have a 1 over u du dy. Okay. So now that innermost integral is pretty simple. That's going to be the natural log. So I have 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of u. We're going to evaluate that from y squared plus 1 to y squared plus 4. And then we have to take the integral of that with respect to y. Now notice I should have absolute values around my y, sorry, my u inside the natural log, but those y squared plus 4 and y squared plus 1 are always positive, so we're good to go there. So this is going to give us 1 half um, the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of y squared plus 4 minus natural log of y squared plus 1 dy. So that's what we have to deal with. Okay, I'll clean up the board. I'll bring that to the top, and then we'll finish this example off. 
Okay, so in a previous board, we argued that this double integral could be taken down to this single integral from one, sorry, of one half the integral from zero to one of those two natural log type terms. Now notice, that means we'll probably have to split this up into two integrals, given that in order to take the antiderivative of natural log type terms, you usually need to, to do integration by parts. So let's see, this is gonna be natural log of y squared plus four dy minus the, anti, the integral from zero to one of natural log of y squared plus one dy. And you might say, well, can't you use some log rules and put those things together? But I don't think it's worth it in this case um, because, again, you'll still have to go via integration by parts to take their antiderivative, and it will be quite messy. Okay, so now let's uh, take care of this one first. So uh, the integration by parts trick here we're going to use is the one that is typical for inverse functions in that you let u equal the entire inverse function. So that'll be natural natural log of y squared plus 4, um, and then we'll let dv equal just dy. And now notice that is going to make uh, du equal to 2y over y squared plus 4, and then that will make v equal to y. Okay, great. That's what we'll do there. And then over here in the second integral, we'll do essentially the same thing, except we'll have uh, y squared plus one. So we'll let u here be natural log of y squared plus one. That makes du equal to two y over y squared plus one. We'll let dv equal dy. That makes v equal to y. Okay, great. Now we'll use the formula. Recall it's u times v minus v du. So we'll have the integral from 0 to 1. Sorry. We'll have u times v. So we'll have y natural log of y squared plus 4 um, evaluated from 0 to 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of v du. So that's going to give us 2y squared over y squared plus 4. Great. And then this is going to be dy. And then we're going to subtract this thing from it. So notice that's going to give us a minus y natural log of y squared plus 1 evaluated from 0 to 1. And then plus, because the minus signs are going to cancel out, of um, the integral from 0 to 1 of 2y squared over y squared plus 1 dy. Okay, so now let's see if we can simplify this any. So notice if we plug one in here, we will get one times the natural log of five. So we get natural log of five. If we plug one in here, we'll get uh, one times the natural log of two. So that's gonna be minus natural log of two. Now, if we plug in zero here, we get the natural log of one, which is zero, but we also get a zero there. So it's zero. Same thing here, great. And then um, we have these leftover integrals. So this is going to be minus two times the integral from zero to one of, now I'm gonna write that in a special way. I'll write that as y squared plus four over y squared plus four minus four over y squared plus four dy. Okay, so notice uh, that's definitely equal to what we had above after factoring the two out, but now that is easier to take the antiderivative of. Now we'll do the same kind of thing over here. So I'll pull out a two, then I'll have the integral from zero to one of um, y squared plus one over y squared plus one um, minus one over y squared plus one dy. Okay, great. So now I'll pull that to the top and then we're almost done with this example. Okay, so uh, let's see where we are now. We've got that this integral should be natural log of five minus natural log of two, and then the combination of those two integrals. So now one thing that I'll notice is that this term right here is just the number one. This term right here is just the number one. So that should make that bit easy. 
and now uh, we're kind of ready to go. So this is going to be natural log of five over two. I can use log rules to put those together. And now I have minus two. We're ready to take the antiderivative here. So the antiderivative of one is obviously y. Okay, so now here we'll use the fact that this is going to be four over two arctan of y over two. So you can look that up. That's kind of a well-known formula for the uh, inverse tangent uh, derivative and antiderivative. And then here we're going to get, uh, this is evaluated from zero to one, and then plus two times again y from this minus arctan of y, again evaluated from zero to one. Okay, great. So now notice that's going to give us natural log of 5 over 2. Now uh, minus 2, we can evaluate this at 1, and we will get 1 minus 2 times arc tan of half. Great. And then if we plug in 0, we'll get 0. Arc tan of 0 is 0, and y evaluated at 0 is 0. And now we have this is plus, evaluating this at 1, we have 1 minus um, arc tan of 1, but it's well known that arc tan of 1 is pi over 4. And then the same thing happens if you plug in 0. Okay, so in the end, uh, you get this value for this uh, double integral. Okay, so real quick before we finish, the final answer should be 1 half natural law of 5 over 2 plus 2 arctan half minus pi over 4. So in fact, we lost a factor of 1 half somewhere along the way. I think that was just like a simple error on my part, but um, you can probably track down where that happened. That happened at the very beginning, but it shouldn't really change much what's going on here. Okay, so we're done now.